Hey guys, how's it going? I've been wanting to make this video for a long time and I finally can now. I've wanted to make it ever since I st first started looking to get into night vision and I found this option which effectively gives you the cheapest Gen 3 night vision monocular possible. Now, I did end up going with some PVS 14s before this, but I still always wanted to try this out. And I finally got the, all the materials I needed and kind of got it all worked out, so now it's finally ready. First of all, all credit goes to the 91st Research and Development page on Facebook. They're the ones that figured this out and uh, put the kind of instructions out there. All I'm doing is creating a video to try and make it more clear as to what you need to pull this off and how to pull it off. So first of all, I spent a total of $710 on this, which is crazy. That is cheaper than the cheapest PVS7 you can buy. Now to break down where I got the different pieces from and how much they were, I first spent $410 shipped to my door uh, was the housing. Now the housing I got was the M2021 or M2021 uh, housing off of Alibaba uh, from Shenzhen Hashing Security. So this is a Chinese company obviously and the housing is pretty cheap, only $410. Now, the tube I'm using is the MX10130 tube. Now, people would recognize this as the same tube that is used in the PVS7. So the reason that usually this would not work is because the PVS7 MX10130 tube outputs a inverted image, if this makes sense. I, again, I'm not an expert here, but this is what 91st Research and Development said. It puts out an inverted image, but this housing has a inverter that then inverts the inverted image to make a right side up image, pretty much. Anyway, what this means for us is that the MX10132 are generally cheaper and not as desired as the uh, PVS14 tubes like the uh, 10160 or the 1179 or whatever it's called. So they're pretty much cheaper. So I got really lucky and found mine for $300, but you are realistic if you wait and are patient, you pay attention to eBay, the Facebook groups, all these places where you can buy really cheap tubes, you can find them for about $500 pretty consistently. This puts you in at under $1,000 if you can get it for 500, but if you get it like 600 for 600, you're about you know, a hundred or so over a thousand dollars. This is still remarkably cheap for any true Gen 3 night vision device, especially a monocular which has distinct advantages over a biocular device such as a PBS 7. Okay, let's get straight into the build then. The first thing you're gonna need is the housing uh, that you get off of Alibaba. The next thing that you're going to need is the uh, 3D printed adapter piece. I'll have the file linked in the description for the STL file to download and print this. And then you're also going to need the tube and then just for the sake of ease I had the uh, battery compartment that's part of the housing attached to it in this photo. And then the last piece you'll need is the inverter piece for the uh, housing. It comes with the housing. Um, I think it came outside the housing and then it might have been in these two pieces. So it, it's pretty easy, it just screws on. Next, what you're gonna wanna do is unscrew both the lenses from the main body housing. And we need to remove these two little uh, sets of wings inside the body housing in order to make room for the image intensifier. So I'm gonna do that with a Dremel tool. I also wanted to take this moment to point out that the housing uh, body did come with some damage straight from the factory. As you can see over to the left side, there's some damage on the outer side of where they put the metal thread adapter in. Additionally, the housing did not come with two of the four screws that screws the battery housing to the main body. I contacted customer service to see if I can get replacements, but in the full review, I'll let you guys know how it went. Now, when I was dremeling out the uh, two sets of plastic wings, I just used a uh, circular cutter bit um, and pretty much just melted off the plastic from the heat. Um, but then I found that the piece was too big, so I switched to a small little circular sander, and that actually worked much better, is much more fine. I could get the smaller, tighter spaces. So this is what you guys should be left with, just a big open space, enough room to fit the image intensifier tube. It's definitely not pretty. I don't claim to be any expert, so if anything, this video is a proof that if I can do it, you can do it. 
Next, what you're gonna wanna do is solder up your tube. So just use this as a guide from, uh, from the tube to the board. Stick your two little wires and those two holes in the board and uh, get some solder in there. I know I did a terrible job at soldering, but again, if I can do it, you can do it. Uh, I'll probably go back and make this prettier. Next, what you're gonna wanna do, or what I did, is remove those little plastic tabs on the tube. Um, I don't know if you have to do this, but it made it a lot easier for me to get it inside the housing, and I'm not gonna use this for anything else, so. Next, all you have to do is throw the image intensifying tube inside of the housing body. Uh, just make sure you get it, slide it all the way in there very carefully and make sure it's the correct direction. And then you just put the battery uh, compartment onto the main body housing using the screws provided. Again, mine only came with two, which is enough, but not ideal, which I had all four. I might be able to source some more somewhere else, you know, at a hardware store or something, but you get those screwed in and then you should have the main hard part of this build done already. Um, next, you just need to screw in your front lens piece to the body, and that's easy enough. Just be sure not to cross thread it. And, but they're both metal thread, so just be cognizant of that. And just don't cross thread it and don't over tighten it, and then you should be good to go on this step. Next, you're just gonna take your inverter piece as well as the 3D printed uh, adapter. Make sure you take off all the filling material. There'll be some filling material inside there as well. Now, you need to be very careful. The threads on here are plastic versus the metal threads on the housing. So be very careful that you don't cross thread or strip the threads on the 3D printed adapter. That's actually what I did to mine. So one set of the threads was actually stripped. Now you'll put the inverter piece on one side of the 3D printed adapter. It's pretty tight, um, so just be careful and shove it in there and get it through. Make sure it's all the way seated. Once you're done with that, you can go ahead and take the ocular piece and thread it into the other side of the 3D printed adapter. Again, being careful not to cross thread or over tighten it. Um, and what you could do to alleviate the cross threading and over tightening problem is actually 3D, or not 3D print, but machine a metal piece or metal adapter, and then you wouldn't have to be so concerned about it, uh, you know, cross threading or over tightening. So for mine, this one's already shot. I need to 3D print another one, but it'll just keep on spinning. But if you have one where the threads have not been stripped, you should be good to go. At this point, you should be ready to turn the unit on. Just make sure you have the lens cap on. You should see that green glow. If you can't get the image to focus, no matter what you do with both of the adjustment knobs, I'll show you how to fix that real quick. You're gonna to wanna to take the ocular lens and identify these three screws. Two of them are hex screws and then one of them's a small tiny Phillips head screw. You're gonna to wanna to unscrew those. Um, I've already loosened up the two other ones. And then you'll pull off the ocular shroud. This reveals three hexagonal screws that are holding the ocular lens in. So after you unscrewed all three of those, you should be able to adjust the ocular lens more and bring the picture of the night vision tube into focus. Once you have everything set, tighten those screws back down, replace the shroud and replace those other three screws and you should be good to go. As far as mounting options go, I use the Pano Bridge with the FLIR uh, adapter arm. Uh, it's intended for the FLIR breach, but it works pretty well on the M2021 housing, and I can see through it pretty well. Um, overall, super excited I got this done. It works pretty dang well. You guys already got a sneak peek, but here's what it looks like through the tube. Just as good as my PVS-14, to be honest. It looks great. Um, I'll turn on the uh, built-in IR illuminator here in a second and it just turns it up to a whole different level. Yeah, look at that, so much brighter. Anyway, if you guys enjoyed this video, I would really appreciate it if you would subscribe and hit the like button. Let me know if you're gonna try the build as well and eventually I'll be coming out with a full review video for you guys to know how it stacks up against comparing against a PVS-14. Anyway, I'll see you guys later.